morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will be talking today about my master's project that includes using a sniffer dog for amphibian conservation. Uh, I wanted to show you a short video, but because of technical difficulties, I can't. So I'll just proceed. I guess our problem statement is urbanization threatens wildlife populations, and especially um, uh, species with cryptic lifestyles like burrowing frogs that's not easily detected with normal survey methods. So one of the species that I'm specifically focusing on is Picus gili, oh, oh, gili. <laughs> <laughs> Picus cephalus adspersus, the giant bullfrog. According to the Atlas and Red Data um, book of frogs of southern Africa, the giant bullfrog is listed as near threatened. Other threats also include road queue, pesticides, um, pet trade, and even human consumption in some parts of Africa. Uh, bullfrogs are also listed uh, on the National Environmental Management Biodiversity Act of 2004 as a protected species. Okay, here's just the um, different life stages of the frog. Okay, so our aim was to harness the natural ability of the uh, dogs to detect scent and using this as a monitoring method in the wild to help with research and conservation processes. Okay, so um, everyone knows that dogs are already being used for their noses in hunting and forensics and that type of things. And this is where our sniffer dog, our turbocharged border collie, <laughs> Jesse, comes into place. <laughs> So um, our objectives are to reinforce the target detection in the sniffer dog. So we're focusing her on the scent of the bullfrog and then to use her to loca locate the bullfrogs in the wild and then to define their microhabitats and requirements. So I use operant conditioning as a training um, mechanism to uh, reinforce the dog uh, in a certain spontaneous behavior. So the two types of con um, reinforcement I use is positive reinforcement as well as negative reinforcement. So positive reinforcement is when I'm training with the dog and she indicates at the giant bullfrog scent, then I reward her. Negative reinforcement is ignoring her or not giving a food reward. So this process um, reinforces her to the correct behavior. So we, um, we gradually introduced a more diluted target to focus and um, make her more sensitive for the scent. And then uh, we added uh, disturbances as like soil, other frog scents, and environmental disturbances like weather change in, to make her um, more accurate. So the, the conditioning process uh, goes from controlled environment in the lab and then to semi-natural environment, and then after that we will take her to the natural environment where, the, uh, where it's known for bullfrogs to um, be. So the first step was to familiar familiarize the dog with the target sense in uh, exposed containers in a, a more controlled environment, and then we introduced the diluted targets so making it um, more and more diluted and then adding disturbances. And after this, we, um, we train her in a stimulated natural environment. So this is just for uh, some pictures that uh, we train with her in the botan botanical gardens and on small holdings and things like that. So the results from the dilution, just to give you some background, one-to-one -one dilution is a swab of the bullfrog skin diluted in one milliliter of water. So one to 1,000 would be a swab in a liter of water. So we did um, multiple tests with the dog at different dilutions, and as you can see, even the smallest dilution was at the best results um, for the reason that she she could focus on the scent where she picked up the other scent as too strong uh, initially. So then also we are looking at ways to preserve scent to make it easier to train <coughs> the dog on different scents. So the four types that we are using is a diluted swab, which is a swab that we, um, we keep in the fridge for the period of time. We are now at two months, but we're testing it over a six month period. And then we have a one to 1,000 dilution that we keep in the fridge and a one to 1,000 dilution that we keep frozen and then the swab itself. 
So as you can see, so far the best results in um, the first two months was um, keeping the swab in the fridge and then just diluting it in 10 milliliters of water before doing the runs with the dog. Okay, so the, uh, <coughs> the behavior of the bullfrog is um, the adults migrate to the breeding sites where the water is um, for a couple of weeks in the year. And then after that, the juveniles move away from that site. Now the problem is we don't know if they're moving in the, the way that's indicated by the arrows. We don't know how far they go. We don't know which direction they move in. And that is why we're doing this re research. Okay, so um, to determine um, the bullfrog ecology, former studies um, didn't pr provide enough detail and mark and recapture um, didn't produce great results. So now we're going to use the sniffer dog to um, determine if a site is occupied by bullfrogs and to help us locate them. So when we have located the bullfrogs, we will then estimate the population size and density, uh, the, uh, calculate the occupancy, and define the microhabitats like soil type they prefer and even the moisture in the soil. And then uh, with these, this data, we can um, then determine if they want to develop in a certain area which area they should use, which area the bullfrogs will move in, and what would be the best way to develop in that area. So this is the distribution of the um, giant bullfrog um, through Africa. And then this is in South Africa. The dots are the, um, the data pre to um, 1969. And the light blocks are 1969 to 2002 and the dark blocks are where they were found in both periods. So as you can see in the Gauteng province is, um, is the most likely area you will find them. So this is how we, um, we use this to determine our sites for, for the research. So there you can see we choose um, two sites in Gauteng and one in the Free State. The orange one in the Free State was the full Yoon screen area that we um, decided to use for this research. Then the green in Johannesburg um, Gauteng <coughs> province, and then the blue one is Heidelberg in Gauteng. So these are the sites we are planning to use for this research. And then to conclude, conservation um, managers will henceforth be able to make informed decisions about um, effective conservation units for bullfrogs, which can be used as guidelines for construction and development and um, preventing further loss of habitat and populations of the species. And then future research may also include locating endangered species that are difficult to find, like the Amatola toad, and even maybe diagnosing infectious disease on the frogs, like amphibian chytrid. Thank you.